Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with John Riggs. Thank you. I don't know why I'm pointing at you, but <laughs> you put it at me, I gotta point at you back. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, we have Nintendo homebrews today. These are homebrews, games built from scratch. They're not hacks, they're not repros. These are actual <laughs> games built from the ground up. New games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. This is so cool. All right, let's take a look. All right, dude, what do you yes. have for me here? Should we just go jump right into it Let's here? Let's do it. All right, we're gonna start off with a game from Mega Cat Studios called Log Jammers. Log Jammers, love the name. Log Jammers, um, think Wind Jammers for the NES. Right. Um, how awesome is that cover there? The oh, I know, I know zombies. <laughs> <laughs> um, where Wind Jammers is, uh, say, horizontal, uh, Log Jammers is vertical. And right. the same idea, you choose your player, and instead of a frisbee, you're throwing an ax. And it's called Log Jammers because you're uh, also doing the, the Canadian log rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, trying to chuck your ax into theirs for points. And I love it how it has a level in space because, you know, logs in space. <laughs> <laughs> logs in space! Logs in space! Very cool game though, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, the CIB too comes with a full color manual and all that too, so. Killer! Pretty cool, pretty cool. This one, unfortunately, they don't make it anymore, but it's called Star Keepers, and it is such a fun game. I wish they still had this in circulation. <sighs> this game looks amazing. Like, the, when you popped it in, I was like, I want this game, it's so unfair. Yeah, it was a Nintendo Age exclusive. A lot of these games kind of get funded through Nintendo Age, or they get uh, known, or notoriety, or whatever. Right. And this was a game uh, done by some dude in China, didn't know how to program Nintendo games. He's like, I'm gonna really? make a game. And we're like, good luck to you. And he made this game, unconventional way. Its own mapper is a Nintendo term for how it's created and all that. So, okay. and he's not making any more of them. I tried reaching out to him saying, "Can I?" The, the ROM won't play in an emulator. It's done so specifically, but unfortunately, um, it's a homebrew. But and I want to show it off because it shows what you can do. What yeah. some dude in his bedroom, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's it's cool. So you basically collect stars. It's very yep. similar to kind of Defender you described, where you you wrap like the levels wrap around. Right. Yeah, you have to collect all the stars. Your stars uh, get dumped into the chimney of your house. Right. But you're also flying around. There's the uh, the joust element where the more you hit the button, the more you do your jetpack, yeah. and you have a, a gun that you can power up to. So really impressive game. Fun. This is neat. I know. Too bad you can't find it anywhere. Yeah, rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can talk about this briefly. This is called a Zero to X. It's a puzzle game. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to look at because at first when you're playing it, you're like, I'm, what is going on here? Am I winning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Soul Goose Productions. Um, what it is, is you have to match up the two numbers on the tile every time you push left, right, down, or up. Um, all of the pieces, like if you, if you push right, for instance, then all the pieces will shift to the right side of the wall. Right. And another piece will start up. And then and they're all a different number. But once two numbers collide into each other, then that, say, one and one will turn into two. Yeah. And you have to keep building those up until you get, you know, four, five, six. I didn't like know how this was working at the time, but then I was looking at your hands. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm yeah. starting to make Yeah, you're just kind of, you're kind of like, it's, it yeah. doesn't... It, it's obvious if you had all the tiles on here and you're like, you know, shifting it this way, then shifting it this way. Yeah. Um, very addictive though, and very, very, yeah. uh, you just keep playing it, you want to get keep building up, and then after a while, uh, you lose because there's too many tiles on the screen. And <laughs> very cool. That's what happens from there. Uh, we can talk about, we, let's just jump into this one here. I was so impressed by this. So this is Leisure Suit Larry, the right. original game on NES. Right, and uh, no source code because the source code from the original game doesn't translate to Nintendo source code. Right, right. So he had to literally, this is from uh, Kahan Games, and he had to literally just remake the game playable on Nintendo. And I have to say, so when we put this in there, we're, we're capturing footage and playing it, right. I was really impressed because, you know, obviously I remember the original game and I'm like, oh, wow, it's it's Lefty's Tavern or whatever. Right. And you go in there and then there's the bathroom and then you go around the building and you get into the cab <laughs> and you go to the casino. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, and it's all just point and click style. It yeah. Just, it works with your NES pad and all that. And um, he decided to make Leisure Suit Larry for the Nintendo. Um, I know at least Al Lowe knows about this game, <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. I don't know if he had his blessing or anything right, like that, right, but, right. Uh, but certainly a um, uh, a love letter, what they say. Absolutely, right? absolutely, that's so cool. <laughs> love that too. Uh, we gotta talk about these two, because these yeah, are just so cool, yeah. both of them. The Haunted Halloween series, there's two of them now. Uh, 85 came out first, and then just uh, recently um, 86 yeah. uh, came out just uh, late last year or so. Yeah. 
and um, uh, they're just super, super fun. What yep. can you say about them? I mean, platformer kind of beat them up. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of RPG elements here. Uh, the second game has great graphics. I was really impressed. Yeah, I mean, they both do. And, and it's cool tricks that you can do in the Nintendo to make it look like, you know, like the, the sewer flooding with the little right. bile stuff on top of it yeah. and all that. And the other thing also, too, about these is that uh, colored cartridges, which I think is so cool. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So, so like, yeah. like subtly translucent uh, cartridges. And again, I think it's really fun that they... You know, they take new games and they not only do the packaging, but also the manuals, but right. they also do some fun stuff with the labels and the cartridges. They really do. Yeah. Uh, super, super fun game. Um, yeah. Again, still built from the ground up. Somebody just had to put it together. Um, I like the fact that you don't really die. You just turn into a zombie. Right. Like after you get hit so many times <laughs> yeah. and all that. And the second one also has that uh, you can play as a female too. And she's, yep. she's pretty awesome too. So if you're looking for homebrews, this is, th these two would these, be a great place to start. They are, they are some of the yeah. best. Yeah. Um, sure. It, a lot of these games, these games including, um, you're like, these could have been on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah, yeah. Um, some people think when they think homebrews, they think like, oh, well. Like tech demos yeah, and stuff. Yeah, you know, like, like, oh, I, I understand it's, you know, like gameplay over graphics and stuff like that. But a lot of these have awesome graphics, too. Yeah, it's true. Uh, one of them for sure is this Legends of um, Aulia. I guess Aul you can Aulia. Aulia? Sure. Something like that. Uh, Zelda-like. Uh, plays like Zelda, except for your other gimmick is you have your owl that you can both attack with or pick up items with. Right. Um, and you could scroll. I mean, it's free-floating, scrolling, move all directions and all that and um, super super awesome game yeah too. very impressive I mean watching you play that I was like wow okay this again this is a game that could have been released back in 1987 uh, or, it could have been 89. easily it, I know easily it would have sold millions <laughs> would have been one of my favorite games right up there with you know Crystals and Legend of Zelda and all yeah that. absolutely could have had that one um, let's talk about uh, this one which was a convention exclusive at uh, John Hancock's Callots Gamers for Kids Expo right, right. Um, again with the translucent cart this is called Tortoises a brutally difficult game. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah. <laughs> Good lord, man. Um, inspired by the arcade game Turtles. Yeah. Um, a little bit like Mousetrap, right. a little bit like Blueprint, where you have to go into the area where you find your baby turtles, bring your baby turtles to the home, but sometimes there's no baby turtle there. Right. It's another enemy on the playing field. Yeah. It's already hard enough as it is. <laughs> we did not need this level of difficulty. Very cool Nintendo tricks in this game, though, too. Yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff that, that sh typically shows up in demos, like wavy kind of lines and, and oh, yeah. bouncy screens yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's... Uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy indeed. Um, I want to talk about this game too because there, there's a fun story behind this well, one. Well, you warned me on this one. You're like, <laughs> yeah. This game will not win graphics. You talk about graphic gameplay over graphics and all that. This is the epitome of that. It's basic championship wrestling. <laughs> The reason it's called Basic Championship Wrestling is because this game was originally programmed in QBasic. Right, right. Um, Using ASCII graphics, as you can see on the screen right now. Yeah, um, you do wrestling moves. It's a turn-based, kind of a turn-based. Um, you choose your move, and then it's either you pull off your move successfully, or they pull off their move successfully. Right. Um, you have your health line, and then when they get to zero, then... Uh, then you can pin them yeah. and win the match. It's only one player, unfortunately, um, but I just love the fact that he programmed it in Q Basic once upon a time. Yeah, and then uh, he was like, "I want to put this on a Nintendo cartridge," so he did. And yeah. it plays on a Nintendo cartridge. Well, you are such a wrestling fan that you were just like, I don't care. I have to get this game. I have to get it, of <laughs> yeah. course. I have to have it. Um, but it's available now. Basic Championship Wrestling. So if you're collecting all the wrestling games like me. It's yeah, that was pretty funny. One game you don't have. Um, we can talk about... Ooh, should we do the this one here? Sure. Well, it's controversy. A lot of controversy, controversy. behind Super Russian Roulette. Uh. <laughs> what do we say about this game? Well, so first of all, I, okay. first of all, this game is very impressive technically. Uh, there is so many minutes, I want to say hours, of spoken dialogue, clear dialogue for a Nintendo game. Right. It's not just like, the adventures of Bayou Billy. It is legit, you know what he's, he's articulating. Yeah. <laughs> well, well. Looky here. Let's do this. I'll load one. Howdy. Your move. Um, it's Russian Roulette, which is straight up, you take turns uh, pulling the trigger. This is a zapper game. You do need a zapper. You do not need a CRT TV. You can play it on a flat screen right. because you're not aiming it at the screen. The trigger mechanism, you don't have to aim it anywhere specifically. Um, but it's hilarious because he gives you nicknames along the way, like especially yeah. if you're playing multiplayer, he'll give you a nickname, but every time it's your turn, he'll call you by that nickname every time. <laughs> I think it was Moose Lips once. <laughs> so he's like, oh, here's Moose Lips. 
<laughs> That's going to be your nickname from now on on my channel. All right. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Uh, but this one, this, it was this, uh, this was another Kickstarter uh, Kickstarter project, and um, it's just it's very 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 impressive. Great music. Uh, I, I can't talk highly enough about this game. Perfect party game. Perfect party game. Perfect drinking game. I yeah, suppose yeah. too. I was I was watching Ian from uh, from the CU podcast play this, and oh. it, it was it was <laughs> riveting, riveting. Oh. It was awesome. To watch yeah, he that. Um, to quote him, and he mentioned this on his podcast too. This game takes a turn for the dark, I suppose, um, if like the three of us were playing. Right. And then uh, the, the the third player, the other player is always going to be the uh, is the cowboy on screen, and if he dies first. Then it's just down to the two of us, and on screen, it's just the dead cowboy hunched over the table. And no music, no dialogue, no egging on or anything. And it's I just like think this is so funny. It's pretty dark. <laughs> it's pretty dark. Very, very cool game. Very oh, impressive. Um, and because we had a game that went with the zapper, it's only fair we have a game that they literally made a homebrew that works with the power pad. This is pretty cool. And this game is called. I'll pop it up here. This yeah. is called Tailgate Party. Yes. Um, are you familiar with cornholing, kind sir? Not even a little bit. All right. It's not what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's when you have a plank of wood. Let's say, for instance, you have the plank of wood. It's okay. elevated. There's a hole in it. You take your bean bag and you try to get into the hole. Okay. They do it at parties. They do it at tailgating. They do it um, a lot of brew pubs who have an outdoor venue and stuff like that. It's just kind of a fun drinking game. Casual. Corn holing. It's literally called corn holing. Don't, Watch your link. Don't Google that, kids. Do not. Yeah. <laughs> and and if you do, then being it and remove uh, <laughs> remove filters. Um, it's a it's a game that uses the power pad and with the uh, tailgate party you throw your bean bag or anything heavy I suppose yes. whatever I don't know if you a beer bottle or right. Pat the NES Punk's book I suppose you can throw that on there I guess um, yeah, to land on the uh, the parts of the power pad and you get points for that yeah um, and if you get more points than your computer player or your versus players or whatever um, then you move on to the next level it's like actually that. pretty clever use of the power pad I mean I was actually kind of I, I was like oh wow that's pretty cool I mean I, they're making games for the power pack. I know, it was, it was awesome. So maybe we can get someone to make a, a homebrew game for the power glove or yeah. the U-Force or something like that. You know, <laughs> with that, the laser scope, the helmet that you have to say, fire, fire, something like that. Um, and this is kind of, well, we'll do both of them together. Maybe. Yeah, let's do that. We can do both of them together. Um, you hold that one. Sure. I'll hold this one. My buddy Mega Ran, this is Random Beats. Um, he has a chiptune uh, a chiptune album that plays on an NES cart, and it's all um, a lot of these games too. I should point out too, um, all new parts. So you're not destroying games, you're not killing games, you're not sacrificing games. Uh, new cartridges, new circuit boards, uh, new parts uh, to make these new games for the yeah. Nintendo system. And this one uh, is like that too, where um, if you want to pop in, I'm, I'm a huge Mega Ran. He's a hip hop, uh, hip hop nerdcore guy, so definitely check him out for sure. Um, does a lot of the conventions too. He has that game on recently. Okay, and um, he made a chiptune album that plays on a Nintendo cart. Which I think is super awesome. And then here we have a cartridge that I've covered on my channel before. Right. And that is uh, Sergio Elizondo. And he did a Winner Is You. Now, this is so <laughs> interesting because he is a, what would they call it, multi uh, instrumentalist, a guy who plays guitar, bass, drums, yeah. keyboards, everything. Uh, Bad Mamma Jamma, I think is what they call it. Bad Mamma Jamma. Okay, yeah, I think a so. A dude who has a lot of talent. And basically, <laughs> what he does is he. He does his own versions of classic NES tunes, like right. you know, uh, level music, theme songs, stuff like that. Sure. But what he did was he he actually packed on the original di digital audio files onto this cartridge, right. uh, and it's completely custom because of course those files are massive. Yeah, they're waves, right? Or, yeah, or yeah. MP2s they're, or something. Yeah, or they're they're especially compressed to right. fit into something like this. But it basically <clears throat> plays real digital audio the entire tracks, right. a full album on real hardware. I mean, the first time I, I, I was walking through Portland and I heard it, right. and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I looked, and he's like, yeah, this is the cartridge playing. I'm like, what? The, like, I couldn't <laughs> process it. I'm like, how is that happening? You know? Right. But again, an example of someone who is really taking their love for the NES sure. and making a physical, you know, cartridge, something really special. It sounds amazing. I mean, it it's, it's one of those mind blowing things. You can listen to the audio, you can look up his YouTube channel, it's Sergio and the Holograms, and you're, yeah. hearing, you're hearing that. 
which is like CD quality on a Nintendo cartridge through your TV. It's, yeah. it's, an, it's an insane experience. It, it really is. Again, it, and, and it's you can do it on the real hardware. There's no modification. No, that's true. Yeah, you're not yeah. soldering in any special capacitors. No, no, no. It's I know. This is one of my gems of my collection. It's so cool. <laughs> I know. I'm pretty jealous of that one, too. <laughs> Got to order my own. Um, and then finally here, we're going to talk about... I had the thing open, so I was going to make sure like, it comes with... Again, these games come with full color manuals and all that. This is the Black Box Challenge from Jeffrey Wittenhagen. This is, my friend... I'll hold the game. You can hold the box if you'd like. Uh, this was this was a project when he was releasing one of his books. Jeffrey Wittenhagen uh, is also a book author, and he does like he writes books for Nintendo and Super Nintendo mm. and stuff. Um, but he, like many, wanted to be in his own Nintendo game. Apparently, so he made this game um, where he is hunting down every black box Nintendo game um, in a very kind of like the top down overview Zelda but, style. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have to go on fetch quests. Like there's somebody that you talk to. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm trade. I'm help me make a trade with this other guy. I have my Mega Man. I want his. Uh, like, you know, Adventure Island, and you try to trade, they're like, oh, no, no, I didn't want a three-screw Mega Man, I wanted the five-screw Mega Man. <laughs> so he he's a collector, so he knows these things when wow. it comes to trades. Um, it's a lot of fun. There is a fighting element in there, too, so yeah. you have to, like, fight other people, um, get your power-ups along the way, and how you get your power-ups is you play the black box games. There is a black box game-inspired little mini-game. Yeah, this is so cool. From all of them. So when you're playing, like when you find your uh, Donkey Kong 3, for instance, right. um, you play a little miniature version of Donkey Kong 3 on the game, <laughs> and when you get a certain point value or something, um, now you can block, or now you can uppercut, or something it's like that, too. It's impressive. I mean, Very well again, done. not just making an overview game, but all those little mini games. Right. Like, wow. um, uh, Sly Fox Studio did this game. Um, they've done other homebrews in the past, too. They're fantastic. They're excellent. They're wonderful. Can't talk... Hmm. I got another company I can't talk good things about, because they're trying to make new games for the Nintendo and um, he reached out to them and they hooked it up and, and they went above and beyond fantastic game called the uh, black box challenge wow cool super super fun and on, on top of that too if you're looking it's I feel like the like the dude at the end of like reading rainbow or something like that if you want more information on these <laughs> Jeffrey Wittenhagen also did a book on homebrews and it just came out just recently so I had no idea there were this many homebrews there are a tons a uh, again ton. like you said a lot of our tech demos yeah. right so and a lot of them might not even be completely finished or or whatever um, but still I, I guess the thing that's really impressive ooh. here again these are not hacks these are not you know tweaks of a current game Game. Right, right. These are people who are learning how to program for the actual NES. It's right. so awesome. There's a lot of reach. There's a lot of help out there. Um, I know uh, firsthand the Nintendo Age forums. Um, there is a whole section in there. It is, it's the, there's a, a br the brewery, which okay. is a homebrew section. So huh. if you're interested in making your own homebrew games, there's a lot of tutorials on getting your feet in the right direction. You know, step uh, forward here hmm. to making. Uh, these these awesome games. And there's a lot of help. There's a lot of outreach. So that was that's kind of my next step is to build my own homebrew game. I just it's it's a it's a labor of love. It's very time intensive. Yeah, well that's <laughs> cool, dude. Well, if people want to follow you on your path, to, okay, to not only doing hacks and, and all that sort of stuff, but per, yeah. perhaps making your own original game, where would they find you? Uh, you can find me at John Blue Riggs on Twitter, etc., all social media networks, um, and I also host a YouTube channel where I show you said non-homebrew games, where I show you how to. <laughs> make your own hacks if you do want to take a game that already exists and remove the character and put yourself in there or something like that i can tell you how to do that and i love showing off like obscure weird consoles and gadgets and stuff oh like you that totally too. do i know it's totally. awesome stuff like this shirt <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thank you very much for watching thank you for subscribing and take care if you enjoyed this video and let's be honest i know you did right these are great videos you're going to want to be subscribed to my channel because I release two new videos every single week on Tuesdays and Fridays. And speaking of John Riggs, he and I have done a bunch of cool videos, including a Famicom import video. That was pretty cool because he loves his imports, as well as a series of NES hidden gems. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.